I mean, I wanted to ask you about LeBron James's contract extension. Oh, we yeah. were bandying about the notion of perhaps LeBron uh, leaving his contract open so that he may play with his son. He instead, just on a random August day, decides to sign for two more years in L.A. Does mm-hmm. this ruin the possibility in your mind that he goes to play with his son? What What for you is the basketball Illuminati gears going on a LeBron contract extension? I'm glad you brought this up because when that news came out, I had so many morons say to me, oh, you got it wrong again. I said I spent most of the podcast talking about what Bronny's going to do, what Bronny's options are. And then we brought up LeBron and what he could do and why he hadn't signed an extension yet. The extension he signs is a two-year deal with a player option on the second year, meaning it gives him one more year beyond this one. That's a nice little, you know, safety cushion uh, in the meantime, in between time situation for him so that if the rule doesn't change, right, and Bronny has to stay another year past this senior year of high school right here, then – Again, LeBron still has that flexibility to re-enter free agency in 2024 right when his kid is draft eligible. Nothing we said yesterday was invalidated by that extension other than the possibility of could he come out straight out of high school or basically with his high school graduating class if that rule were to change. Now it looks like if that rule were to change, LeBron wouldn't wouldn't be able to capitalize on that as immediately as, as he would have before. But... It's still the same situation where he's keeping his options open while his son tries to figure out what he's going to do. Is there any precedent for this situation in sports where a guy's son is coming into the league and it's one of the more powerful guys in the league where he's... This is just... It seems unprecedented, this situation. right? Was he... Was 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 the older Bonds like, I want to play with my son kind of thing? Like... The Griffies, right? Didn't the Griffies play? The Griffies yeah. play together. Yeah. But in terms of, like, the leverage of where yeah. he's basically, he's, the like, house. he's also affecting his, like, recruiting. There was a report out about him, uh, like, Oregon yeah. being the number one thing, and LeBron's getting involved. It just seems like, if it seems like this guy will get drafted regardless of whether he, did. I'm not saying he might be a G League bridge guy, like mm-hmm. a yeah. middle, like, but he's going to get drafted. Yeah. His uh, value's uh, going to be higher so, just because he's LeBron's kid. Chris, you weren't here yesterday, but I asked Dan the question, how high would you draft Bronny if it meant for sure you're going you're to get LeBron with a forty one year old LeBron? Yes, but a for, but LeBron nonetheless. So you're just like more for the marketing and stuff, and like get a lot of but, national games. But also look at him play. I mean, he's still really good. It's not like there's got to be a cliff though at some point, right? Sure, you sure. Care about me? I should stop. No, but no, no, no. I, but like, I guess my question, like, these are concerns for sure. I'm not saying give Bronny a hundred year co- contract. But I'm saying you're Chris Cody. You're the general manager of the uh, San Diego Conquistadors, right? And you're on the board. You have a first-round pick, right? Are you drafting him with, like, the 25th pick? I would do it just for jersey sales. Regardless of what your motivations are. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm doing it. How high? How about top 15? Now that's about where we where That's where it becomes interesting. Like, in the 20s, it's like, yeah, everyone would agree, like, a 20th pick is – the value is there to just – risk it but like if it's a top 12th pick that's uh... see when i asked zach this question zach's like i wouldn't do i wouldn't do a first round pick and i'm like you're wilding like if i was a 29th pick you're not gonna take Bronny if it means i'm gonna get lebron for two years but he, to, to chris's point though this is age 39 age 40 year 22 and year 23 that we're talking about like it like we just sort of assume that in two years time lebron will still have enormous value just because We are now sort of getting used to the aging process not being real. Like Tom Brady is still playing at 45. But, man, I I just don't know how signing up for LeBron at age 40 is worth potentially. Like, if you believe in a different prospect, that you're just going to throw that away to go get LeBron at that age. So, just to, to clarify, he's 37. He turns 38 in December. And in his age 37, 19th season, he averaged 30 points a game. Eight rebounds, six assists, shot 52% from the field, 36% from three, and got to the free throw line six times a game. Washed king. Like, I get what you guys are saying, but if the fall off for him is 18, seven, and four, that's not worth it. LeBron, and and, you know, LeBron's 18, seven, and four isn't like, you know, Julius Randle's. Right, it's going to be a smart yeah, exactly. Seven and four. It's, gonna be, it's gonna be impactful. It's gonna help you win games. Like it's, this isn't. He wh- he seems to me like the kind of guy that I don't I don't know if he'll have like the Carmelo block where he's just like I just can't do this the same way. He's always been programmed to. 
be the most efficient that I think if he even notices his skills diminishing in, in some degree, he's just going to amplify parts of his games that he can still do very well in an older age. I'm not a scorer. That's his thing that he always says. I'm not a scorer. Not bad for not a scorer. He, like, he loves to drop that one. But it's real, man. Like, if you put him in the high point, basically, what's already starting to happen is that if LeBron becomes a power forward, then he's like a, an amazing power he forward. He can play 50. Yeah, like you throw it to him in the block, and he's like throwing no-look passes. The guy's cutting and stuff. He's you, doing. You mean him to tell me, like, would you take – LeBron James running point at 48 years old over Terry Porter in his heyday. Yes. I would, too. At yes. 48? Yeah. 48? 48. 40, I would take, right now, sight unseen, I would take 48-year-old LeBron James over the best Te- of Terry let me, Porter. Let me pull, let's pull up Terry Porter's stats. Like, Terry Porter, who was a very right. good— how, how, how high would, like, if it was Raymond Felton in his pump? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Easy. That's going LeBron. too far. Yeah, no, you've gone too far. Uh, Terry Porter's best year, his best year— 18.2 points a game, four rebounds, I'm five talking, assists, shooting 45% from the field. I'm talking KG veteran Terry Porter. Yes, he was an was all-star. He was probably like 31 years 93, old. 93, he was 29. I'm talking about like Miami Heat oh. Terry Porter. Oh, no, then no, absolutely not. He was like 10 points a game. But then. like, say LeBron is smart enough to realize, ah, I'll, I'll be a role player. Yeah, the older do it, that he I can get. do it forever. Yeah, he can do it forever. 48-year-old LeBron James would be better than like 31-year-old Terry Porter. Well, no, that's now. Now you've gone, gone too, too far. far. Actually, you know what? Thirty-one-year-old Terry Porter played thirty-five games. He got hurt, and he averaged nine points a game. Yes, yeah. forty-eight-year-old LeBron is better. What's a tipping point? What's a backup point guard tipping point on where you would take well, a forty-eight-year-old LeBron James? Monte Morris. I'm taking LeBron. But the problem is, would LeBron want like this in in this gamble? Is there a situation where he get to forty eight and he's like, Nah, man, I'm done playing. Like you? No, put, no, no. Let's just say, like, for this hypothetical, he's playing. LeBron's focus is to play till he's fifty. Okay. D'Angelo Russell. I take, I take, Lebr- I take LeBron. Wow. I don't think D'Angelo Russell is. Uh, I think he's he he's, was an all star. You no, know, he's a great. He's a very talented player. That's a score. But it's like there's a lot of sizzle on that stake. You know what I'm saying? No, I understand. Marcus Smart. Up. Marcus Smart. Oh, I don't want to get aggregated. <laughs> There's just like a cult around Marcus Smart that I just don't understand. A cult? Look at the, uh, the a kind of a uh, clam chowder eating Sam Adams drinking cult. I think his I think his value is inflated. God's breath. 